The Four Hour Work Week by Tim Ferriss. Best selling book. You might have read it before. I was here uh, eating breakfast and I decided to read it again. I read it a few years ago. It's one of those books you should pick up more, more than once. And uh, I really enjoyed it this time. There's a lot of stuff I agree with in that book. There's a few things that I differ with and might be a little outdated now. But if you haven't read it, you know, one of the premises and the things that I agree with a lot with Tim Ferriss is that at the end of the day, life is about whether you enjoy the day-to-day -day moments. You, I call it lifestyle. You can call it whatever you want to call it. Um, by the way, I'm here at my vacation place in Oslo, Norway. So it looks a little different than than California. But uh, I was thinking, you know, and this vacation house reminded me a little bit of, of the four-hour work week. Just one of the things that the book talks about is how you can work less, be more productive, travel the world, live anywhere. And uh, I've actually been talking a lot on that. Like I said, I have a slightly different philosophy, but the end result I think is similar to what Tim Ferriss is trying to say with his book, which is life that you design that you enjoy. And, and I'll tell you, you know, one of the most common questions I get is what would you tell your 19 year old self again? And one of the things is be very careful of the slippery slope of saying next month I'll like that. Like, I, next month I'll do that thing that I like. This is probably the most precarious of all mindsets. And so a lot of people, I did this little poll, on, if you're on my Snapchat, you might have seen it last week, and it said, would you make three, rather make three grand a month, traveling the world, doing what you love, or 100,000 a month in a job you despise and you have to work at it for five years. And it, you know, it was quite a disparity, obviously, 3,000 versus 100,000. So the one, you're gonna make five million bucks in five years. The other one, you're gonna make, you know, maybe 150,000 uh, in five years, so maybe 200,000. And more people, it was fairly close, but a few, I would say it was like 20% more people would say they'd take the job that they like. but. That's just a poll. If you look at the average person's lives, people are biased towards the th mindset, like I said, of going, well, I'm gonna s do what I don't like in order to save up some money to do what I do love. And uh, Pablo Picasso has a great quote on this. Can you pull up that Pablo Picasso dichotomy quote? I'll try to read you the whole thing. I memorized the first half, but the, the second half's good too. And, and basically, this, dichotomy becomes a trap and the trap you end up never getting to the stuff you like so in this book the four hour work week oh here's the here's the quote here thank you never permit a dichotomy to rule your life I di a dichotomy in which you hate what you do so you can have pleasure in your spare time look for a situation in which your work will give you as much happiness as your spare time that's Pablo Picasso's version of the four hour work week or what I call, you know, the good life. Health, wealth, love, happiness, those four pillars. Now, I think that um, the four hour work week is much more, this book in particular, is much more on the wealth aspect. Um, I think Tim Ferriss has some other books like Four Hour Body, which is him talking about, you know, physical health. Um, I don't think he has a book on relationships and love. I think that's a huge one. That third pillar, relationships, love, that, that one, if you get that one wrong, it ends up destroying all the other four. I mean the other three. It destroys, obviously, physical health when you're under stress and you're not around people you like. It destroys your wealth because no matter how much money you can hoard, how much you can accumulate, if you don't like the people you're around, you go against the the very nature uh, of a human, which is a social being. There's a lot of science. Matt Lieberman, the UCLA professor, has written a lot about that in his book Social, talking about how social life uh, is primarily what our brain's wired to do. Most of the key triggers to happiness or depression come from social life. So that's, you know, this third pillar. And then the fourth pillar is kind of the spiritual happiness accumulation. If you get the first three right, health, wealth, love, then you'll you'll hopefully most of the time have a have a, a lot of happiness in your life. 
Now, one chapter in this book that I thought was great, um, on page, actually, let me pull it up here. I took a picture of it. This is Norway. You can see the fort over there. That's an island, a little harbor. There's some huge cruise ships that come in there. Oh, I set up my my uh, gym over here. I'll take you. Here's the it's a two bed. It's a two floor flat in a place called Schuvholmen. There's the upstairs over here. I set up a little gym. Get some sun, work out. Little basic gym. Little Sylvester Stallone, Rocky gym. And uh, I've done a lot of lifestyle engineering here. I got a chef that cooks food and makes me meal prep in the morning. Leaves it outside my door here in these condos. And uh, so I'm always working towards that lifestyle. And each person's lifestyle, let me say, will be different. I mean, people get this confused. There is not a one size fits all. Like I like Norway. Some people, my friends like Brazil, you know? So set up your vacation homes in places you like. Here's what Tim Ferriss says in Four Hour Work Week. Step one, pick an affordably reachable niche, niche market. And he has a quote from Joan Chen. When I was younger, I didn't want to be pigeonholed. Basically, now you want to be pigeonholed. It's your niche. And then Tim says, creating demand is hard. Filling demand is much easier. Don't create a product, then seek someone to sell it to. Find a market, define your customers, then find or develop a product for them. So he's all about reverse engineering your income. And I'm gonna be talking a lot uh, in the next weeks and months on this concept of how can you travel the world and get paid to have fun and uh, to get paid to what you enjoy. And I think one of the things, and Tim Ferriss talks about this book, and there's a lot of people have written about it and worked on things since this book came out, uh, it, what I call location neutral income sources. So I think there's multiple steps. I'm actually gonna release some videos and some live calls on this, but that's one of the most important thing. And there's a concept called the U economy, where non nine to five jobs that now exist, whether they're Uber drivers or people who are designers on 99 designs and people who do piecemeal work on Fiverr and people who do stuff on uh, uh, Postmates or all kinds. Of, there's even a company here in Norway, a friend of mine, she needs some extra money. She rides a bike and delivers food. So these are location neutral. Obviously, if you're an Uber driver, it demands a location, but you could go anywhere and drive Uber or you could go anywhere and if you have some skills, do some freelance work for people, depending on your skill set. So this is a whole nother conversation. I just thought I'd talk about this 99 designs and uh, the focus on lifestyle. And in the world now, especially the media, I mean, the focus is all over the place. The focus is on Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton and politics. The focus is on uh, terrorism and stabbings and, and the lack of health care and education and poverty and all this stuff. But people forget poverty of lifestyle is more important to focus on than poverty of bank account. Because you can have a wealthy bank account and a poor lifestyle. I've seen it. And obviously you can have uh, uh, not as much money, not as high income, but have a wealthy lifestyle. Especially when you run it through the filter of health, wealth, love, and happiness. So, yeah. What's your ideal situation? What would be your like bliss? Would it be traveling the world once a month? one month out of the year, every day, would it be? I mean, some people like to stay in one place. Some people don't need a location neutral income. How much do you need? What What would be your uh, What would be your version of 4-Hour Work Week? Leave that as a comment below. And uh, make sure you check out my Snapchat. And now Instagram has a feed. If you want to see my Instagram story, just go to my, at Ty Lopez. It's a verified Instagram. And click the little, my, my profile picture. You can see my story. It's kind of cool. So, my cousin Maya is here working. Say hi, Maya. Hi. What are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> Something. All right, talk to you guys soon.